Hello everyone, are you ready for another adventure? It's me, Wokey, and I'm back with another Fake Grand Order video. And I'm also very tired because I just got, <laughs> I'm resting from my tri trip from Horror Nights. And I assumed today would be a good day to rest because I didn't have to worry about anything if, until close to the 10th, which is when we're expecting this event, the Halloween event, to be coming out. The reason is, is that they announced a live stream and they said it was going to be happening on the 10th. So it likely would happen on the 10th, they would announce it, and then after maintenance on the 11th, it would go up. So I thought it was safe to not have to pre-record anything or do anything of that. And then today they announced that actually Imaginary Scramble Main Interlude is going to be releasing early. Because if you remember when I did my video talking about the events coming in October, this came after Halloween and was actually in the middle of it. Um, they decided that actually no, it should release a little bit beforehand <laughs> for some reason. Um, I guess just so there's no lulls in the game at all. And there's also going to be a Halloween 2024 event pre-release campaign as well. So I'm going to be talking about mainly the Imaginary Scary Scramble main interlude release campaign and a little bit of this just because it's very small. And that's going to be today's video. So let's get right into it. And excuse me if I sound tired or if I miss something. It, 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 everything hurts. <laughs> let's go. Um, starting first with Halloween 2024 event pre-release campaign. This is super easy. Just all it means is that until from October 7th to the 27th, every Ember gathering stage and training ground daily quest will be unlocked for the duration of the campaign. That's all it means. And then they're also just showing these are event bonus servants right here. And I guess they also just showed the new uh, assassin servant that is going to be coming, and which I'll talk about a little bit later when I actually talk about the event itself. And just like always, there's a social media campaign where we can get six uh, six in courts as long as we reach 25k reactions between the Facebook and the Twitter account. Um, shouldn't be too hard. Actually, did we already do this? Seems to have been. It's still ongoing. I don't know. I'm tired. <laughs> Hopefully, we reached it or we did it. If not, I'm sure gas, gas, gas will get there. So let's talk about the actual thing. Imaginary scramble main interlude release campaign. Uh, happening from October 7th to October 31st because th th I guess no one on the NA team told them that Sparking Zero is coming out. As someone r planning to play that, this is very annoying that they decided to release something on Sparking Zero Day, specifically. Um, a limited time campaign, 1 4th AP for Arc 2 main quest, which is Anastasia to Avalon Le Fay, so you can hurry up and get going because you'll need to have cleared, I believe it is... You need to have cleared Olympus if you want to actually participate in the Halloween event that's coming up. Um, the main interlude into information is that um, you had to have cleared Lost Belt 4. And then the name of the main interlude is the Imaginary Scramble Quest. It costs zero as long as you have obviously unlocked it and whatever. The actual event itself, I tried to explain it. I didn't do a great job of explaining it because I said it, was, it reminded me a lot of Nick Arcade. And then someone brought up... Actually, it's a lot like Battleship, <laughs> and yes, it is a lot like Battleship. So what you do is that you scan the map and unlock surveyable areas, expand resources collected by clearing event quests, dazzling scales, dazzling fins, and dazzling sharp teeth. To conduct a void sea survey, surveyable areas become unlockable once you scan them, and then from there will appear in the void sea current continues. As you proceed to the void sea survey, void sea survey quests will appear. These include two types of quests, quests where enemies appear and quests where you can find treasures. Clear various quests and unlock scannable uh, areas to earn Void Survey points. And then collect Void Survey points to unlock the main quest. Pretty easy stuff. Use the Void Scanner to look for scannable areas where you can find either an encounter for an enemy or some rewards. And then clear the Void Survey quest to earn Void Survey points. The main quest is unlocked by collecting more of these points. You can see when you've already scanned it versus when it's next is scannable. Um, uh, already scanned areas. This area in red can be, can be searched using the Void Sea Scanner. When you touch a red area, the range of the Void Sea Scanner will be displayed. When you touch a scannable area, select the scanner to use the scan of the Void Sea. And you can see here. It all sounds a lot more complicated than it actually is, but it is literally just, it's like you're unlocking a fog of war, similar to Battleship. You go through it and you'll eventually find it. You look for treasure, you look for fights, and then you're good from there. And then you can also use backups to defeat powerful enemies, which you can see here. Ahsoka Behime is one of the many uh, dudes that you can call upon. And okay, there's a couple other summer servants, but it's a very easy 
event to just do. It's not that hard. It is actually kind of unique as well, and I actually did like doing it um, back when it first released. Um, the main interlude quest, which will be fear so I'm glad that this specific thing was actually able to join up. Uh, main interlude quest, event shop currencies, free quests, and challenge quests are not available. Only main quests and exploration battles. Currency drops and event damage to ease do not provide event bonuses. So here's the support skills that you can see right here, which will feature Osoka Behime, Nemo, Raiko, uh, Melt, or Lambud, however you want to call her, Frankenstein Saber to celebrate Halloween, and Zong Yu. And then below are just all the various battles here, but you don't need to be seeing all that. You would want to experience it, but it, <laughs> you would want to experience it yourself is what I would assume. So because there's not actually that much, there's actually not a free-to-play servant related to this. It's literally just collecting the treasure, getting stuff, and experiencing the story. And I think the story itself is actually pretty good for a Halloween spirit type of... Um, in the Halloween spirit is the right way of saying it, yes. Um... Usually Halloween events in Fago are a little bit more cheery. They're more on the like, ah, have a good time. They're not really, there's not really that much horror in them. The more horror related stories are summer for that one year. Because in Japan, they consider summer uh, more horror related. And then there is Imaginary Scramble, which uh, feels very much like a horror story. But anyway, yeah, that's, that's the main thing about here. Pretty simple. Also because this campaign period just starts right here. Um, I mean, I guess duration is until the 31st. So you have until the 31st. Basically an entire month. Um, which is not bad. So there we go. Next. And here's the actual summoning campaign that goes with it. Um, which they added to two units. They added Yang and Mysterious Heroine XX. So that's going to be next. There's going to be craft essences, but remember that the damage bonus or whatever bonus they would have provided isn't there so they're just really here for the arts if you like them like color me true greatest ocean and mystery treasure um the banner breakdown will look like this where it'll be nemo and uh, fran on the 7th and on the 9th is when it unlocks van gogh and raiko and then on the 11th it is young and it is mysterious heroine xx so we'll talk about these units real quick then I'll start with saying the four stars. Saber Fran is a single target quick that I think I like Saber. Oh, the, let me give my prerequisite. I'm tired, but not that tired. I, you never really have to justify yourself for wanting a summer unit. Typically, for most people, if it's a character you like in a swimsuit, that's good enough. And what they actually do doesn't matter. So I will tell you what they are, which is a single target quick Saber. Um who could probably use a couple buffs at this point just because of how old she is, and she actually hasn't received any from what I can remember, at least not on NA. Yeah, you can see here, she has a bunch of MP generation, but a lot of it is also tied to being like, you can only use it when your MP gauge is 10% or higher. You lose 500 HP, just like little tiny things, um, which isn't a deal breaker. It's just something that she has to deal with, which probably would be. When activated, stun all enemies except for the enemy with this debuff for one turn after one turn, which is like, okay very interesting type of unit but yeah single target saber if you're looking for one she definitely is one but there are other options out there for single target quick sabers mainly the one that comes to my mind is caesar but there's others such as karna who is santa karna who should be having a retrain not retrain he'll be coming back up pretty soon and let me tell you he's really good even uh, <laughs> i have a video of him doing stuff and he none of his skills are um, leveled up all that much. He just has MP5, and that's good enough for him. Uh, next is Mysterious Heroine XX, who is a uh, foreigner, who is a single target anti saber, and then also anti. Um, no, she's just straight up anti saber. <laughs> Deals 200% extra damage to saber class enemies, increases zone attack for one turn. Um, yeah. She's also, she is actually also good. That The threat to, I was thinking she had a bonus threat to humanity, but it's only 50% up. You probably won't always have that up, but I've actually used her a lot over the years just because she's also a uh, foreigner. So sometimes she'll be very useful against a annoying berserker as just a, a unit that you can bring in to hit. Because she also has a little shield and her increase to attack is, but to herself, it is 50%. It is only one turn, but you can make do with that. It is also tied to an invincibility, which kind of sucks, but it's okay. You can make it work. 
uh, gain crit stars and then reduce on star absorption. So the main reason a lot of people like Mysterious Heroin XX is because obviously it's Mysterious Heroin XX, but also fantastic. All three arts are great. Like I said, you don't need a lot of justification <laughs> to like a Summer Servant. Similar to Raiko. You know if you want Raiko. She's a single target Lancer, which also provides like a increasing one ally's buster performance for three turns, a 40% buster increase, which I've actually over the years have used in various ways as to use her as a weird support. I actually wish she got a buff to make it so that she could maybe buff the uh, Jason team a little bit more, because I actually think she's a really interesting servant in the way she does things, but... Like I said, you already know if you want Reiko, so I do almost all the time. I'm glad to have mine. I use her whenever I can. <laughs> whenever I can justify using her, I use her. So now let's go into the five stars. We'll start with the showstopper, which is Van Gogh. Ah, Van Gogh, she is a foreigner. She has three quicks, one arts, one buster. Uh, four hits on the quick, three hits on the arts, four hits on the buster, five hits on extra. Her active skills are, for the first one, Void Space Fine Arts, Grant Self Gut Status for one time, inflict 500% chance to inflict Curse with 100 damage for 10 turns, and that will activate three times. Curse is on, uh, charges on MP gauge per curse stack that she has, which is why she gives herself three stacks of it. Um... Uh, revives with 3,000 3, HP when the Guts is triggered, and then one MP MP plus ten percent for so each stack of curse that you have will give her ten percent MP when she's at level ten, and cooldown is six. Her second skill is Hetegele Huis, the Yellow House, a plus one hundred fifty percent chance to reduce all enemies' defense for three turns, reduces their quick resistance by twenty percent for three turns, grants party evasion for one attack three turns, recovers own party's HP by three hundred before every turn for five turns. 500% chance to inflict curse with 100 damage for 10 turns to the party. The defense down is 20% on the cooldown of 6. And her third skill, Soul of Water Channels EX, increases one ally's attack for 3 turns, increases their critical star absorption for 3 turns, grants self a buff on attack buff for 3 turns, removes own one latest curse debuff when attacking with quick cards. If successfully removed, the debuff increases own attack by 10% for 3 turns. Absorb all enemies and parties' curses to self. This is considered a demerit. 30% to attack, the absorption up is 600%, and the cooldown is 5. Uh, her passive skills are Existence outside of the domain, um, Insanity C, item construction B-, minus, Divinity B+, plus, Curse of the Sunflower A, HP will never fall below 1 when taking curse damage. Her third skill is an Anti-Caster Attack Damage Aptitude. Get it? cast <laughs> get it <laughs> now i don't think it means anything i just think it's funny never mind i've, I've been thinking of the wrong foreign god i think anyway i'm thinking of haster which is not <laughs> which is not caster but whatever i'm tired her noble phantasm is the dis started night which is the starry night it's a rank ex arts anti-unit 500 percent chance to inflict the terror status for one time three turns to all enemy which is 60 percent chance to activate the debuff below every turn when it's activated, 500% chance to stun them for one turn. Increases the party's critical damage for three turns. Increase the critical damage of existence outside of the domain allies by 100% for three turns. Gain 10 crit stars every turn for three turns. The crit damage at MP level 1, 50%. And if you get her all the way to MP level 5, it's 100. And then the increase to party attack for three turns is 30% at charge level 1. And if you get her all the way to the final charge level, it is 50%. And that is Van Gogh. Uh, Van Gogh is really, really fucking good. How good? Um, she's the reason why every foreigner doesn't have existence outside of the domain. If we can just take a quick look here. You'll notice that Kukulakan, who is, uh, um, an upcoming foreigner, doesn't have this. And a bunch of actual other foreigners don't have exi existence outside of the domain. And the reason is, is that I, <laughs> at least the conspiracy theory has always been, then Van Gogh's specific ability is so insane that they can't give it to every single foreigner in the game because it would break stuff. So it is, if you just take it at base level and level one, just one of her is 150% crit damage to a single ally with existence outside of the domain. 
not even to a single ally. It's to all allies. So if you have a full team breakdown, like such as having two Van Goghs. So if you have two Van Goghs and you're using this, you're getting 300% assuming that, that uh, the, the, assuming a lot of things. Um, it ends up being that she can do a lot of funny things. <laughs> with this specific Noble Phantasm. The rest of her kit I also think is very interesting and is very fun to use. Um, overall, just a really cool unit. It might seem a little bit weird when you look at this, how do I use it, but trust me, there is ways to use it. I've always wanted a Van Gogh. I wish I could have, this is one of those units where I'm like, I wish I had her myself because a friend of mine has always shown me his like crazy Van Gogh teams that he plays on JP. And I'm always like, oh man. I really want Van Gogh. I, it's the, the pulling is strong. I might actually end up doing a summon video of sorts because I have a little bit more Saint Quartz than I was expecting around this time, but I can't go more than three just because I'm also expected to like summon for more units. Um, and I also don't have some of the big units that a lot of people like using with her. So not only is she really focused on existence outside of the domain, she also has a lot of stuff to deal with curse. So that means that there's another unit that can actually take a lot of advantage to her curse stuff, which is under Alter Ego. Suspense, suspense as I build it up, and there we go. Domen. So you can also use them with Domen, because Domen is, if I remember right, if I remember looking at them, Van Gogh's alignment is Chaotic Evil, and guess what he does? He increases the crit damage of allies with evil, and increases the crit damage of allies with chaotic. <laughs> so it's an additional 100% to crit. <laughs> and he also increases the allies attack of evil and with chaotic. So that's also a bonus like 40% from here. While also inflicting curse to all enemies. This one skill gives curse to everyone and then also lets it so that you can take those curse stats for yourself if you want. Um, another way to inflict curse on reduces all enemies. It's... The synergy, I don't, don't even like Domen as a person, as a character. Obviously, his, this character is insane, but there's so much, like, fun, dumb stuff that you can get up with these units. And this ends up being, puts me in a weird place, because I, a lot of people say, like, you've heard, you say a lot, you say this a lot about Van Gogh, where I really do think she's, like, an amazing unit, but is it a unit that, as me, as a new player, should I be going for? And unfortunately, I have to say no, because I feel like she's better for people who have already kind of built themselves up a little bit and then can actually just kind of have fun and let loose. This is like one of those, mm, it's like when you start learning about film and in the beginning, you should always watch the beginning, the classics of it, of what you should as you're going through film. And then once you're actually stepped in a little bit, then you can start going into some of the more crazy heady stuff. If you start with the heady stuff right away, you might not fully understand it and you might not also like it in a lot of ways because you don't understand what it's going for. And that's what I kind of feel like with Vanko. I Though I would be very curious to hear from people who maybe did start off from the game and they did start off with Van Gogh and hear how they want to say it, how they feel about her. Um, I'm definitely on the positive side of Van Gogh, where I <laughs> absolutely adore the unit, but I also have to be like, listen, you have to be a little bit more built up. Like, is this better than for you for than Castoria? Mm, I would say probably wait for Castoria if you're a brand new player. But if you're someone who already has Castoria, like me, or you already have one of the other support, um, one of the other support units such as Koyan or Summer Scotty, and you're like, well. Actually, it's still early. I don't know. It's it's tough. I'm I'm very tired. I'm not making my point great. But either way, what I'm here to say is is that it's a great unit. But you have to look at your box and see how you're currently progressing in the game. If you feel like you're ready for a unit like this, and when you are, she'll be right there. Unfortunately, she won't be there for you right now. Um, but you know, figure it out. Again, I would like to hear what other people have to say about this because that's what I always assume. Again, I will be going for Van Gogh. There's also the case to be saying to say just like, hey, you know what? Wokey, well, you talk a lot of meta. Fuck the meta. I want Van Gogh. In which I say, thumbs up, brother. You live free. <laughs> you go get him. I wish you the best of luck. Well, let's talk about the unit that's actually going to be showing up first, which is Nemo. Um, all that time I spent talking about Van Gogh, this is going to go by, I think, a little bit quicker. Actually, he recently got a buff of some kind so actually let's see so he's nemo he's a writer he's always in every banner 
And also, if you really like Nemo, the JP side of the game just announced that they're getting a ticket and Nemo was on that banner for a guaranteed 5-star. Nemo's on that ticket that you can just select him and pick him. I'm not saying you should. I'm just saying that if you really love Nemo, there's other choices. But just to go in there, and also the fact that he's not free to play. In general, you shouldn't be summoning for Nemo unless you just absolutely love Nemo and you need that Nemo boy now. So if you're like Musashi or something. Anyway, uh, Nemo, he's a writer. One quick, two arts, two buster. Three hits on quick, four hits on arts. Three hits on buster, four hits on extra. Active skill, Voyager of the Storm, C++. Increases the party's MP damage. Uh, party attack. Uh, for a single turn and then increases the party's attack if they're on the water side or the void space battlefield for three turns uh the mp damage up is 12 percent the attack up is 12 why is he giving 12 percent attack up it's 20 percent on the water side is void space and the cooldown is five his second skill is indomitable b plus he grants self the gut says for one time five turns it charges on mp gauge grants self an on guts activated buff for one time five turns charges on mp gauge when gut status is activated 3,000 HP heal, the MP up is 30%, and if when you trigger the Guts, it's 50% up. On a cooldown of 7, his third skill is the Journey's Guidance C++. Increases the party's arts performance for 3 turns, Increases further increases the party's art performance on Waterside or Void Space Battlefield for 3 turns. Then gain some crit stars, 20% to arts, 20% to Waterside or Void Space arts, and then 15 stars on a cooldown of 5. Passive skills is Riding A+, Divinity A, Sea Gods Protection B, which is an increase to critical damage of art cards by 10% and reduce own damage by 500 on the water side or void space battlefield. It's a good thing he has two of those. His third skill is an Anti-Archer Attack Damage Aptitude, and his Noble Phantasm is the Great Ram, the Nautilus. I shall conquer the Great Ram of the Nautilus. Which, okay. Rank A, Anti-Unit, hits three times. Increases his own MP damage by 20% on the water side or void space battlefield for a single turn. This activates first. Ignores evasion on the water side or void space battlefield for one time. Uh, activates first. Deals damage to one enemy. Deals 150% extra damage to super large enemies. Um, and then... Oh, he is single target. Okay. And then his noble phantasm at... Uh, damage at level 1 is 900%. I thought he got like a buff. And then at MP level 5, it's 1,500. And then he increases his own MP damage for one turn, which is 10% on the MP charge. And if you get him to the final charge level, it's 30%. And that is Nemo. Um, I don't think Nemo is very good anymore. He needs buffs. <laughs> he needs he needs a lot of buffs. Just reading this first skill made me go like, what year did you, did you really? I, I forget how crazy good... They made, because they were Nemo and um, Van Gogh released at the same time, and these are not two units that were designed at the same time. I refuse to believe that. Nemo had to have been designed way before in advance, and they just decided to release them at the same time. Because there's no reason why this man has a 12% MP damage up and party attack up for a single turn. What are you doing? A lot of his damage seems to be, if you are ever in a specific scenario where you need a single target rider who targets and you're, uh, who targets is, is against a super large enemy and you are by the ocean or you are in void space, Nemo is your guy. But if you are not under those specific scenarios, I don't know why you would ever want to use Nemo. This ability is actually very nice. This skill is nice because that means in specific challenge quests that you want to use them, when this triggers, you're going to get 50% MP up. And sometimes that's make or break it in a lot of challenge quest type scenarios. So I like that. But in general, man, I really feel like he needs a buff. Like, what? what's going on here? What's going on, my guy, Nemo? Like, am I crazy? I actually, like, I've said multiple times in the past, I'm a big fan of the Nemo character from the books. Um, and I've always been disappointed in his design, but over the years, I've grown to like him. And I have, when his banner first came out, I want to say I summoned on him, because it was shared with Van Gogh, obviously. And I would have been happy to have him. And I would still be happy to have him if he ever randomly spooked him, showed up randomly for me. I'd be happy for it. But there's no reason you should be going for him, unless, you, like I said, you are Musashi and you just love this boy. You just want this boy so much. He also even has a costume, but it's not worth talking about because it's just literally him and some glasses. Very cute boy, though, for sure. I'm not denying that. I just feel like, and this costume is actually pretty nice. I've always liked it. If you looked at Nemo's art ascension as he goes through, it's, Hello, I'm Nemo. I'm where I have a horn now. 
I want you to see my giant. I want to see you want to see my full coat. And then you look at Van Gogh's art, and it's someone slowly going insane. And I've always thought that the difference between them was super funny. But that's a dumb aside. Like I said, I think they should buff Nemo. If you're a fan of Nemo and you've been using him, please tell me that what I'm saying is wrong. Tell me, tell me that Nemo, my boy, is actually better than he's looking right now. Because he's looking a little like... <laughs> I can't believe that's what they gave him. They need to buff him. Please buff him. Make him better. I still think you could probably find in, the, in that specific scenario where you're in the water side and you're getting this bonus and you're getting this crit damage bonus and you're like everything is literally hitting. He must feel like a great unit, but even then he wouldn't feel like an insane unit. He would feel like a great unit, which is insane when you consider all the parameters in that you're seeing now. But whatever, I said this was going to be quick and then I ended up just talking even more. So feel free to tell me how you feel if you have Nemo and you've been using him over the years. I would love to hear it. Honestly, I would love to. Two super large enemies. Deal damage? Okay, yeah. Okay. Last unit. Yang. Yang Gufle. Uh, she is a foreigner. She has two quicks, two arts, one buster, and she is the unit that was added, the five, the five star. Four hits on quick, four hits on arts, three hits on buster, four hits on extra. Her first skill, which is after her buff, is the abandonment of the 3000 affections, A+, grants self invincibility for one turn, charges on MP gauge by 10% every turn for three turns, gain crit stars, 500% chance to draw all enemies uh, to self by 300% for one turn, 25 crit stars up and cooldown of six. Her second skill is one's favorite concubine A, absorbs all enemies MPH for by one. The amount of MP charged is multiplied by the number of enemies <coughs> gauges drained and then reduce their defense for three turns. The MP absorb is 20% and the defense down is 20% on a cooldown of seven. Her third skill is Son of the Calamitous Star A, grants self a living flame buff for three attacks, three turns. Living flame inflicts defense down by 10% for three turns to enemies when taking damage, and then inflicts burn for three turns to enemies when attacking. <clears throat> when taking attack, increases his own defense for three turns. The burn damage, 1,000. Defense down 20% and the cooldown is six. And her two passive skills are his existence outside of the domain and the divinity B. Her third skill is an anti-ruler attack damage aptitude. And her noble phantasm is Geisho Hayakuraneri. I completely fucked that at the end, my bad. Melody of the Eternal Love, rank B+, anti-unit, anti-country, hits four times, deals damage to one enemy, and then inflicts burn to them, and then uh, the damage is 900% at MP level 1, and the burn damage is 3000, and if you get her all the way to MP level 5, it's 1500 and 6000 burn damage. Uh, the damage is 1,500, and then her overcharge, which is a deal extra damage to enemies with the burn status, 150 at charge level 1, and if you get her all the way to the final charge level, it's 200%, and that is Yang. I really like Yang. Um, I think she's a really solid defensive unit um, that can really help in a lot of challenge quests that you where you have to specifically fight a Berserker. Um... Originally, I was someone who was like not super into Yang. It actually took me a while. I had to specifically be like, I don't understand why Yang is considered good. Because a lot of people do consider Yang good, but I wasn't able, able to see it. And then someone said, like, I think you should give her a second chance. And I did. And she ended up being extremely solid. A lot of these skills are much better once you get her to level 10. And I'm like, duh, you should have been doing that from the beginning. But whatever, this game is very, very tough grind. I can't go be getting everyone to level 10 when I don't know about them specifically. Um, but yeah, especially once you get her to 10, everything kind of feels right. The fact that she's a, uh, she has the ability to draw all attention to herself is really good because this means that this will basically always be able to activate and you'll be able to, you know, absorb the hits for the most part. Even, if, let's say, if you're fighting the ideal enemy against her, which is anyone that is a Berserker, this will be great. She'll be able to, she's already not taking double damage from it. But even if they have the ability to pierce invincibility, they, she won't be taking that much damage from them. Especially when you use this ability with this one right here. Well, she'll have a little bit more defense, but she'll also be able to inflict burn on them whenever they're hitting her. Um... Which will be very nice because then this activates and this will give her a lot more power to go through. 
Um, another thing that's nice for long challenge quest fights is that she has the ability to absorb their MP gauge. Unfortunately, it is on a pretty long cooldown, which is seven turns, which means that for the most part, they're going to be able to hit you with that noble phantasm eventually. But if you're able to use this move along with it, then you should be fine because obviously you'll say, hey, hit it to me, and then you'll be good from there. Um, really, really solid unit. The only thing that would probably be bad is you're, if you're ever fighting an enemy that is either immune to your burns or has such high tolerance to it, she can probably be on a little bit on the wet noodle side, which is true for any unit that specifically has to deal with um, enemies that can't be hit by afflictions of any kind. Uh, which is probably something I should have also mentioned for Van Gogh, but I forgot because she doesn't have the extra damage thing like Van, uh, like Yang does. But it is something to keep in mind. If they have the ability to just never be hit by a debuff, that means that this is just always off. But if they can be hit by it, you're going to be doing a lot of damage. Um, so yeah, Yang's really good. Um, worth going for? Hmm, kind of depends on the person, depends on the box. If you're someone with Castoria and you have been having trouble with Berserkers, you can definitely go for her and get her that way. Um, there's not, like, any crazy big... There's obviously a lot of crazy big units coming up, but in terms of what Yang is specifically giving you, which is a single-target foreigner for arts, if you're specifically looking for that, it's you're not going to be finding anything like that in the upcoming summons. So maybe you can maybe throw a multi or two at it if you if that's something that interests you. Like I said, from my own experience from her, I really do like using her, and I think she's also a very cute unit, which is usually enough for some other people as well. Like, great. Who doesn't love a lady who can do everything? Little weird puffed up skirt, uh, dress, foreign god, all good things to look for in a woman. But anyway, that's the end, uh, the end of this video, and that's the Imaginary Scramble Great Void Sea Battle release campaign. I cannot stress enough, I'm very sorry for being so tired. <laughs> Feel free to correct me on anything that I said, and I'll have another comment down below saying I'm so sorry, but I had to be done now. I, I could, I, there's no space for anything else. Sparking Zero literally unlocks at 3 p.m. right when I wake up, and there's just going to be no time for me to do anything, because I'm excited to play that game. And I will be excited to slowly go through this Void Battle because I've actually had not much stuff to do on Fago. Actually, that's not true. I've There is stuff I could have done on Fago, but I chose not to do it because I wanted to play other games for a bit as I waited for it to pick up a little bit more around October. Um, obviously, Sparking Zero was a big thing to go through, but I've also actually been going through Zenless Zone Zero as well. Um, almost caught up to the most recent chapter stuff as well. I started like maybe a week or so ago as a joke meme with my brother and I'm actually almost caught up with it so that's fun. But anyway, that's the end of the video. Very sorry for the people who want short videos from me. I'm working on it. I'm trying to think of a way to make shorter videos, maybe in shorts so I can better easily give the information out there. But there are people who like watching the long videos and I thank you very much and as always, Thank you very much for the support. You can show support by leaving a like, commenting, but honestly, watching is good enough for me. Um, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Best of luck to you guys. I'll see you in the next Fogo video, which will likely be on the 9th when I have to go summon for Van Gogh. Uh, actually, that's not true, because I have to release another video talking about the upcoming Halloween shit. God damn it, why did everything have to be around Sparking Zero Time? Anyway, that's the end of the video, everyone. Until next time, I'll see you guys later. Peace out.